Bless you, my precious friends. Good morning. I'm going to open up in prayer. I really believe my message that I want to share with you today is really very, very important for the times that we are in right now. I firmly believe that this message is for you today. Please listen. There are two things in life that, that you can lose. Time and things. You can never restore time, but you can always restore things. Please bear with me. Let's get into this together. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the mighty, mighty, awesome, wonderful, magnificent, glorious name of Jesus Christ. At every name, every knee will bow. At every name, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Father, you are Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, you are my Savior, you are my Redeemer, you are the one that comes and saves and sets free and brings healing. I thank you, Father God, that nothing has been lost, nothing has been stolen, nothing will be taken away. You are the God that redeems and restores even when the enemy says, can God do it? Yes, Lord, you can do it. Father, we, we resign to the fact that you are good, that we are your servants. And Father, you are coming to restore and redeem what has been lost in Jesus' name. Well, I bless you, my precious friends. Thank you for jumping on. Thank you for joining me today. I pray that the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, cause his countenance to rise over you, and give you peace. So there are two things in life, two things that can be lost, things and time. Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, 45 and 46 is a key for, for the things that we lose, things, items. Let's, let's read this. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking a beautiful pearl, who, who when he found one pearl of a great price, went out and sold all that he had to buy that pearl. My brothers and sisters, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you've, where you've lost something. <laughs> Seriously, we're about to walk out the door. Karen comes in and she says, hey, Mark, let's go. And I'm like, honey, let me find the car keys. Oh, my hat, where have I put those car keys? Or it's my wallet. Or it's like, oh, my gosh, I even lost my car one day. I remember we were in Tulsa Hill Mall many years ago. And it was like we were here on ministry trip. And we went, we parked our car at the entrance. It was our first time to like go there. We parked our car at this entrance, not realizing like there's a dozen entrances. And we shopped, like walked around the whole day, came out another entrance. And I think I walked around that shopping center for at least an hour, an hour and a half, walking around, looking for my car. You see, you can lose things. And you can always have them restored to you. That's why we have insurance. That's why we've got these things in place. Because I just wish we could have insurance for time. Oh my gosh, I'd be cashing in on that big time. <laughs> okay. What can you lose in life? Oh my. Okay, I, I've written down five categories. I'm sure there's 101 categories. But these are five things that came to my mind. Relationships, friends, family. I know, I know that it breaks my heart. I've got three absolutely adorable, precious sisters I love. But my one sister doesn't want to talk to me. And it's like, it hurts. It really, really grieves. That's a relationship that is, that is there, but it's lost. And I'm crying and I'm saying, Father God, please restore, restore, help me. And I know I need to take initiative. And I need to step up, which I'm doing. I know that I've lost other things. We were back in South Africa. We had a house. We sold our house. So we didn't lose it really. But I did. You know, I came here to the US and it's like we're now renting. And I'm saying, Father God, I thank you that, that you are going to restore this for me. Give me strategy. And I get up and I take initiative and I do things. And now we're looking and we're saying, Father, I'm rejoicing because you're about to restore. You're about to redeem. I just want to stop there and greet my precious friends. Amaryllis, welcome. God's going to redeem for you. God's going to restore to you. Nico, I bless you. Renelle, Dala, 
I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for being on here with me. Press that share button, please. So guys, there's no doubt we can lose things, but we can also lose time. And I want to speak on this, but I'm actually going to include a third thing. Not time that's merely lost, but how you can manage time for the future. So what are these, th what are these things that we can lose in life? I know if you had to write it out, you possibly might write it different to me. But I put it out down in this order. I put five categories. Things that I can lose, that I, that I need to check, take cognizance of. The Word of God says, know well the condition of your flock. And this is my flock. This is, this is what has been given to me, entrusted to me. So I need to manage it. Relationships, family, friends. Look after them. Cherish them. Then my next one is wealth, earthly possessions, and the ability to gain wealth, let alone the assets that you presently have. Some have less, some have more. But you know what? We can lose these things. During the Great Depression, so much was lost. During the Second World War, lost, irretrievable, burnt up, gone. Artworks. Maybe you've had something that you've lost. I know that I know that I'm speaking the truth, and I'm speaking to you today. Because the Lord wants to restore to you relationships, family, friends. These are things you can actually work on and you can go and get them back. You say, Mark, it's impossible. I can't get that back. It's gone. It's dead in the water to me. No, it's not. Things you can retrieve. Things you can get back. You can get back your wealth, your earthly possessions, your ability. Maybe you're not going to get back that same thing, but you'll get back another. Let me say, there's opportunities that we've lost. Opportunities have come and they will never be repeated. But the Lord says, I'm about to do a new thing. Whoa, hold on, I don't want to jump ahead. Health, sanity, emotions, the ability to make decisions. Maybe these things, maybe these things have gone and, they've, and they're eluding you right now. And, and, and it's just like you've searched <laughs> for your sanity. <laughs> you've searched for... For the ability to make decisions, you come to a traffic light, an intersection. Do I go left, right, straight forward? Help me, Lord Jesus. Should I just do a U-turn? And it's like, you've, I've met people like that, where, where they come to an intersection, a juncture, and they freeze. What do we do there? Well, I know that you can get that back. I know that you can get, get that ability back to make the right decisions at this moment. And... And people who have lost the ability of stable emotions. It's like PMS in the morning and the afternoon and every day. It's just like up and down. Woo, like a yo-yo. God wants you to have that consistency. And I firmly believe that God wants to restore your health. Not just for you to live in divine healing. But for you to live in divine health. Maybe it's your credibility. Your self-worth. Your dignity. Maybe those things have been blown out the window. I know that God wants to restore this for you. But God wants you to get up and also participate in this restoration. Go and work at it. Work at that credibility. Wake up in the morning and change your face. Literally. Put on a good heart. A happy heart. A merry heart is good medicine. Fill yourself with the joy of the Lord. Sing the songs of praise. Exaltation in the middle of your storm. And you will see that self-worth will come back to you. You will see dignity be restored to you. Credibility will come to you. And, and another category I've got here is maybe your independence, your self-preservation, and even the desire to live. I've met people who have just lost that desire. God wants you to rise up, mighty woman of faith, mighty man of faith. God wants you to, to go out and take these things back. They're in your ability to do it. As you, as you seek focus and seek the Lord first, He will. He will bless you. Just consider Job. He had lost everything. His wife, his children, the people that had worked for him. They called them servants, okay? People that worked for him. And he paid those servants. Go read the Bible. The servants he had. His camel, his livestock, his wealth, his gold, his tents being his houses. Every single thing, blow and gone, taken by raiders. You know what Job said in Job 19.25? 
I know that my Redeemer lives, and He will stand at the last on the earth. My brothers and sisters, know this, your Redeemer lives. Your Redeemer lives. The key, the key to restoring all things, the key to restoring all things is, is Matthew 6.33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You know, it's much like, it's much like, three elements to make something happen a seed good soil rain maybe four things and sunlight now you've got no control over that rain oh you can water that seed you never even created that seed god gave that seed maybe that seed right now looks like it's totally dried up you've got it looks it looks dead the relationships are gone they're dead your asset base is finished like like just your credibility is blown out the window your self-dignity is like oh lord jesus i feel like dust under the carpet maybe maybe you say my independence i can't even survive on my own maybe maybe your self-preservation to just maintain guys i know i'm going low on this but yeah me there there are so many people out there that are and maybe you're not that down at the moment maybe maybe you've just got a shoelace that is untied you can restore it you can do this when you seek first the kingdom of God and when you seek first the kingdom of God God will cause his reign to come on the soil now what you need to do is you need to take that seed and put it in faith you need to take that seed put that seed into the soil the word of God put it in there and trust the Lord he will cause the rain to come he will call photosynthesis sunshine to shine on this thing and it will grow it's actually got nothing to do with you god has given to you the ability to restore things he has given you the ability did you get that it's not your ability it's his ability he has given it to you so if as you say lord god i'm going to seek you first you 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 are more important than the things i've lost and as you as I'm seeking you, Lord God, I thank you. And bang, 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 God will put it all into place. God will give you a strategy on how to have those things redeemed. Now, you can always get things back. But when time is lost, it's gone. Oh, my goodness. You know, every day, every day offers us 24 hours. Every man on planet Earth gets the same amount of time. No person ever is born with a golden spoon. No person ever is born with a golden spoon in their hand, in their mouth. Nobody is, nobody is born better or worse than another. Everyone have equal opportunities. You might say, yeah, but, but they've got an easier ride. Hey, their ride can break down. I've seen this happen before. I've seen people that are walking that don't have a ride excel and do better. My brothers and sisters, hear me on this. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. 86,000 seconds in a day. Every single one of us have got the same amount of minutes. It is most imperative. Most imperative that you don't lose the opportunity in front of you. If you were given 86,000 second dollars, and every day you went to your bank account and it was depleted, because you never used it, and a new 86,000 86, was put in your account. I'm telling you, I would want to bank it. But you can't bank it because it's time. And when time is gone, it's gone. So utilize and you say, how do I utilize it? How do, what do I do? I want to share with you on how to do that, okay? But yesterday, my brothers and sisters, is like a cancelled check. Today is a promissory note. And tomorrow is cash. That you are still going to be getting it's it's time that is in front of you so sit right now right now just take cognizance take note and say lord god i thank you for my time i thank you for the years that i've lived i thank you for the time that i have right now i'm not going to run around like a chicken with its head chopped off no 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 i'm not going to run around panicking frantic 
trying to turn over every stone to find this and make it work. No, no, no. Father God, I'm going to sit and wait. I'm going to seek you first. I'm going to seek your kingdom, your righteousness. And as I, as I raise my hallelujah in the middle of the storm, I thank you that you give to me the ability to restore these things. And you will reveal to me the strategy on how to do it. Only God, my brothers and sisters, only God can restore the time that you've lost. You can restore the things you've lost. And I've shared with you the guaranteed strategy on how these things can be restored. I'm applying it to my life right now. The Lord will give you things. And you know what? The Lord will even use the works and the systems of this world to work for your advantage. Did you get what I've just said? The Lord can even use the things of this world to work for your advantage. So when Israel was leaving Egypt, they didn't leave empty-handed. They took the wealth of Egypt with them to carry them, to fund them, so that they can go and build in the new place where they were going. And I'm saying this to you. The Lord is going to give you strategy on how to take that what seems lost and defeated, where you will have authority and control over it to go and build for your future. Now, only God can restore time. You can lose things, but you can never have your time restored on your own. For those, for those of you who, who were far from Jesus, the days when you were too ill or depressed to even leave the house, when, when you were lying on your back and you were as sick as a dog and you could not get up, that time you look back in your life where, where your marriage was defunct and it was F-U-N-K-E-D, it was dead, okay? It was like, God, that was a lost time. When your children were delinquent and running wild and sleeping with the pigs, and God, that was, those nights, those days were lost. Hold on. Hold on. The opportunities that you did have to make sacrifices when you didn't, those opportunities are gone. That time is gone. God, it's just like I know for me, Mark Fisser, there were seasons in my life where I repeated watching a stupid movie. And I would sit there like zoned out watching Netflix and I repeat the same movie that I watched two years before or three years before. And, and those, those two hour sessions of that movie that I watched three times are six hours in my life that are gone. And I'm like, God, I know, I know if I lose my wallet, if I lose my keys, I can go and find it. But I can't get that time back. God, I just messed up on that relationship. I can't get that time back. I need it, Lord. I need it. My brothers and sisters, I want to share with you those dreams that you had that looked like they water under the bridge. They're gone. Let, let it go. Come to the Lord. God sees where you were. God sees where you are. He's not callous. He's not cold in the heart. He's, he's not oblivious to the pain that you suffered. You may be thinking right now, Mark, you don't know my story. My brothers and sisters, you're absolutely correct. I don't know your story. I don't. But I've got a story. I do. And Karen and I, we married 40 years. And we are so blessed. Oh, I honor the Lord. I bless the Lord. And I thank God for my wife. But we stepped into ministry shortly after we got married. Been in ministry now 37 years. Living by faith. And it was in 1994 that I got baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. Magnificent, magnificent. And immediately, immediately, I got invitations to minister internationally. And bang, my schedule was full, just like that. And it was like traveling on average six times a year, minimum five. I think once I traveled three times. Many times I traveled seven times in a year internationally. I mean, I, rem <laughs> I remember the one day, oh my, oh my Lord Jesus. 
January, I, the one year, January, I flew off, I think it was, we, we, we all went off to the US from South Africa, went to the US, came home, February, bang, Mark Fisser was, and then I went by myself, I went off to Korea, and I told Karen, I'm arriving home, I'll be home for three or four days, I arrive home, I think it is on the, on the like the 28th of February, darling, and, I, and I'm flying off on the 1st, so I've got about three or four days, I think it is, at home, and then I'm flying off to like Finland, and, and then the following month, I'm back to Russia or somewhere to China, um, and I, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, yeah, so like, we were off to the States, we did our ministry, it was great, I came home, unpacked my clothing, stuck it in the washing machine, from there to the tumble dryer, back into my suitcase, back to the airport, flew out the country, off to Korea, on the phone, back home, and at the airport, Karen fetches me, driving home, and she says, so when are you off to Finland? And I said, on the first. She said, Mark, the first is tomorrow morning. And I'm like, oh my hat. I, I made a mistake with my calculation. I thought I forgot February at like 28 days. Okay. I was, I came, I arrived home that afternoon. The next morning I had to fly out. And, and well, where I'm going with this is, is it was a few years later. It was actually about five years ago. Uh, where am I now? Are we 2024? So 2018, actually. 2018. Karen came to me and she said, Mark, do you know that you've been away from home? For ministry, doing the work of God, but you've been away from home for 10 years. And I went like, what? She said, yeah, you've, let's just calculate this. So like, the only way I can do that, the only way I can calculate it is go back to my passport which I've got like five or six of them because they're all filled up and they're all those maxi passports, you know. So I go back and I have a look at every country, the, ta the days I flew in, the days I flew out. Oh, my hat. Literally just over 10 years, I was away from my house. Now we married 40 years, but 10 years out of your marriage. Yeah, sure, when I'm there, like I'll phone home. I remember that when I was traveling in the beginning, it was like, in the hotel hi can you please dial this number for me and then they'll dial it and then they'll phone me back and and like i'm watching my phone i mean my, my watch because every minute and then we came to the time where we got our cell phones and we had whatsapp so we could do video calls and all that sort of stuff okay but where i'm going with this is is i'm saying we lost 10 years and god i sit back and i say oh father god i can lose things and I can go and find the things I've lost. My car keys, my wallet, the this, the that. I can always, I can always get my things back. But how am I ever going to get those 10 years? Father, I sowed seed. I prophesied personally, one-on-one, -on -one, to over 100,000 people. I've ministered in hundreds and hundreds of churches. I mean, I calculated in South Korea alone. I preached over three and a half thousand messages in different churches, just in South Korea alone. And I'm like going, oh, Father God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. But the, the years that have been lost, help me, Lord God. And, and I, I heard the Lord say to me, I heard it. The Lord said, I'm going to redeem the time. I'm going to redeem your day. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a reset. That was 2018. I did, had no idea. 2019, busy, busy, busy. 2020, we got our visa. We had a full schedule for, for the year in front of us. And suddenly, lockdown, everything stopped. And I went like, what has happened? After, oh, we can't travel. We weren't even allowed to like, like the restrictions were so, so heavy. We could not even like, go out you know what i mean like you want to go to a shop you stand in a queue to enter into a shop and i'm like going father god wow wow is this how and suddenly i was at home every day 
and it was like just it was like it was like our honeymoon all over again and and since then we've been at home together all the time oh we're traveling now but we're doing it together and suddenly God has turned it I never expected God was going to restore my time like that and now he's done it in a magnificent way guys I know that you say Mark you don't understand where I am no I don't but Yemi we've all got a story to tell we really do and I know that you've had things lost and God will give you the ability to get those things back but I want to share with you how you personally right now how you personally can have your time restored I just want to stop there and just greet one or two friends I really really bless you hey Diane please pass on my love to Mike Enoch and Concilia my my super duper blessed friends from South Africa I love you guys please Enoch Concy when you go to church on Sunday Sarapta please please pass our love and our greetings on to the family please tell them that we're really doing well good great amazing awesome wonderful over the top news Chloe's met a guy she's head over heels in love they're in love with each other they're about to they're talking of getting married soon and things like this hey Chris and Rita for Karen and myself yeah we're we doing good Karen is studying flat out doing doing a theology course she's in a, she's finishing her second year through a ministry organization called Caneo I am writing books prolifically I am studying very hard possibly next year God willing I'll either be working on my masters or being able to jump that and work on a doctoral program and hey bless you Sherelle thank you Marcella Dala jumping on Ronell Nico we love you guys Amaryllis and I'm not too sure who five minutes later is and all the others that have jumped up I just appreciate you so much but let me share with you quickly how how you can have your time restored I really believe that the Lord wants to do this for you Joel chapter 2 verses 25 that's such a profound scripture uh, I actually I actually really really want to when you get into this much deeper but because of time restraint right now the Lord will restore to you the years the locust and the swarming locust has eaten when I read that scripture it was oh my hat the presence of God is just all over me right now when I read that it was like the Lord said to me Mark read it carefully and I read it again and again and again and suddenly I was aware that the Lord said to me, Mark, I'm not just going to be restoring to you the time, but I also will restore to you the things. You see, we are so concerned and focused on the thing, but the Lord says, I will restore to you the time, not only the thing. When God restores the time, then the thing gets added on with it. And I firmly believe God wants to refresh you and restore to you. When you seek him first, my brothers and sisters, this is the key. God will bring his plans to pass in your life. God will complete the good work he began in you. God will give to you the desires of your heart. God will give to you the ability to maximize your input with multiplied output exponential release God will restore to you broken relationships God will heal your image and your body and God will restore your asset base and your finance base to his kingdom value the Lord wants to do more than he's ever done before and the word of the Lord says this he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it faithful to complete it. so I speak blessing over you right now I speak release over you right now I declare to you father God I thank you I thank you Lord this is a declaration for you my brothers and sisters father God I thank you that you are the God that restores to us restores to us the years the locust has eaten father not only do you restore the years but I've got this 
Do you, do you know what a concertina is? One of those chest organs, and they play them like this, and then they push them in and out, and they make... It's, we used to have them in South Africa. Right. On. Okay. And I see the Lord saying, I'm going to release... It's like a bagpipe, okay? Bagpipes, Scottish bagpipes. I'm going to release a sound that's going to come out of you. I'm going to release a sound that's going to come out of you. It's going to be the sound of heaven. It's going to be the sound of great, great, great rejoicing. Now, my brothers and sisters, you say, Mark, how do I do this? Stop focusing on the things and stop focusing on the time. Focus on the Lord. Right now, get your focus and your attention on the Lord. So, Father, we come before you. Father, we repent. I repent for, for the time I've wasted. I repent, Lord God, for trying to hoard things and collect things that have no eternal value. Father, may I think eternally and may my focus be on you. And Lord God, as my focus and my attention is drawn and pulled and drawn to you, Father, I thank you according to James. As I draw near to you, you draw near to me. And I speak the release right now for my brother and my sister watching this. For each one of you, I speak the favor of God upon you. For those who will watch on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, I encourage you and I urge you, seek first the kingdom of God. Whatever that means to you, say, Lord God, I lay this down and I desire to seek you first. Speak it over yourself. And as you speak it over yourself, you will see God will redeem your day. God will redeem your day. God will redeem and restore to you the years the locust has eaten. And then, when, bam, victory, the Lord is going to restore to you also those things that you have lost. So I bless you. I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for jumping on this. Please press that share button. And contact me if you need prayer. I've got a truckload of emails to go through. I've been asking people. I've been inviting people. I'll pray for you, cover you. And people have been writing in. So I need a few emails to answer. But I love you guys. I bless you. Do cover us in prayer. Um, please do pray for that. We've become effective in establishing the prophetic wells around the country.